So today at the U.N., 184 countries voted to demand an end to the criminal 60-year U.S. blockade on Cuba. That's 94% of the world. Guess which lone two states voted against it? The United States and Israel, of course. The very same entities currently starving Yemen and Gaza. Again, we're the terrorists, folks. The United States... Biggest terrorist organization in the world. Bigger than Al-Qaeda. Bigger than ISIS. Bigger than El Nusra. Bigger than Russia. We're the biggest terrorist organization in the world. And boy, do we terrorize the shit out of it. Here's State Department. Here's what they say. They say, we will seek to empower the Cuban people to determine their future by making their lives miserable with horrible sanctions. Wow. I, I, what I would say is, of course, it is for the Cuban people uh, to speak to the results of uh, the Cuban Party Congress. Um, we have spoken uh, about our uh, review of our uh, Cuba policy, um, which remains ongoing. Um, but uh, we know, of course, that will be governed um, by two principles. First, uh, support for democracy and human rights uh, will be at the core uh, of those efforts. Uh, and we will seek to empower uh, the Cuban people uh, to determine their own future. Um, and second, uh, Americans. Uh, and how do you do how do you empower the Cuban people to determine their own future? Well, we try to assassinate their leader about 70 or 80 times a day. Uh, that's how we empower people. <laughs> Uh, we also do crippling sanctions. We also do that. Does that empower the people? That's what we think. Builds character. Builds character. You said are uh, tend to be the best ambassadors uh, for well, wait, um, wait, freedom. Wait, wait, wait. Freedom uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, for uh, 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 um, and second, uh, Americans, uh, as we've said, are uh, tend to be the best ambassadors uh, for um, freedom uh, in Cuba. <laughs> of course, he can't make eye contact when he's saying that. Yeah. Of course, he can't. Of course, he has to mumble and stumble and put us and uh, that's called a tell. And that guy knows he's a lying sack of shit. <laughs> the fucking USA isn't the best ambassador for anything except murder anywhere. That's all. What are we the ambassador for? Murder. Bombing, murder, torture. That's what we're the ambassador for. We have a worldwide torture program. Extraordinary rendition, which sounds like something Liberace would do, but no. Cuba sanctions. That's what we're doing. We're doing Cuba sanctions. Is there anything that the United States is known for? If there's anything the United States is known for, it's empowering people in Latin America and the Caribbean to determine their own future. <laughs> yes. Oh, if there's anything the U.S. is known for, we're the ambassador of democracy. Just ask the people in El Salvador or the people in, uh, you know, uh, Chile or Peru or uh, Haiti. Or anywhere, Honduras, anywhere. Cool. Lift the sanctions and leave them the fuck alone. That's what we'd like you to do. Lift the sanctions on Cuba and leave them alone and let them determine their own future. But that's not what they mean. Biden is keeping Cuba on the state sponsors of terrorism list, which was the last minute Trump maneuver. In terms of Cuba policy, there is currently zero distinctions between Trump and Biden. Meet the new boss. Fidel Castro, the CIA's most bizarre assassin. You want to see some of the ways they tried to kill him? Fidel Castro served, survived no fewer than 634 attempts on his life. Cuba's iconic dictator provided an almost mythical adversary for what became an obsessive, error-prone assassination campaign by the CIA. They literally tried to do his exploding cigar on him to try to kill him. Perhaps the most famous attempt to kill Castro came in 1960 when the CIA poisoned a box of his favorite cigars. Just a year after Castro seized... Oh, so not exploding, but it poisoned it. I thought it was exploding. Just a year, No, that, that was just a good trick that, that he did. Yeah. Uh, just a year after Castro seized power, the agency spiked the cigars with a botulinum toxin, botulinum, botulinum toxin strong enough to kill anybody who put one 
in their mouth. By the way, the exploding cigar was also a Bill Clinton sex move. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> it's a true story. It's a true story. <laughs> the deadly lover, Marita Lorenz, while she was Castro's lover in late 1959, was recruited as a contact agent for the CIA and tasked with assassinating the Cuban leader. She was given two botulism toxin pills to drop in Castro's drink, so her story goes. Just one would kill him in 30 seconds, but she got cold feet. I like how they're titling all these like drinks you'd order at a bar. <laughs> right? Hey, I'll, I'll take have, a deadly lover, please. I'll take the painted seashell. <laughs> Can I have the exploding cigar? Yeah. How about the contaminated diving suit? You have one of those? The You're C not driving, are you? <laughs> the CIA planned to contaminate one of Castro's diving suit with fung with a fungus that would produce a chronic and debilitating skin disease. The diving suit, as well as an infected breathing apparatus, was to be given to Castro by the American lawyer James Donovan, who had been involved in hostage negotiations with the Cuban leader. Well, they really took advantage of his love for the water, didn't they? The poison pen. I'll have a poison pen, please. Another CAA plan to kill Castro used a hypodermic needle concealed within a pen. The needle would be so fine that the victim would not notice its insertion. The needle was to be rigged with poison and injected into Castro by a highly placed Cuban official who was in discussions with the CIA. Boy, the pen really is mightier than the sword. Am I right? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the psychedelic speech. Can I have mine on the rocks? Oh, I like, yes. Other CIA plans were to undermine the leader's public image as a charismatic strongman. The CIA planned to sabotage Castro's speeches by spraying his broadcasting studio with a chemical that would make him suffer similar hallucinations to LSD. Other plots included spiking the dictator's cigars with a chemical that would disorientate him, hoping he would smoke one before delivering one of his marathon oratory performances. And all it all it did, it, it did was make his speeches a lot cooler. That's all. I think that might be how they reached like nearly a 100 percent literacy rate. Yeah. <laughs> like, like he was like hallucinating and he was just like, you know what, man, everybody needs to read. <laughs> Reading is like having sex in your mind. <laughs> Take it from that troll standing behind me. Yeah, he was tripping balls and he's like, hey, we got to get everybody reading. There you go. So there you go. There's uh, meet the new boss. Same as the old boss. Congratulations for voting for Joe Biden. You fucking maniacs. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you we join our premium program, and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.